Lesson 2. Area. Definitions. The idea behind area is that it measures how much space a geometric figure takes up. For example, the triangle on the right of this diagram is bigger than the one on the left. What we would like to do is quantify exactly how much bigger it is. The quantity, or number, describes how much space a figure takes up, and that is known as its area. The way area is measured is by starting with some unit length, be it a foot, centimeter, inch, etc. Then we construct a square that's one unit across and one unit tall. We then count the total number of such squares that are contained in a geometrical figure. For example, consider this rectangle. Each of the little squares are a unit square. As the rectangle is 8 units wide and 4 units tall, the total number of squares that this rectangle is made out of is 8 times 4, or 32 unit squares. Suppose that in this case the unit of measurement were an inch. Thus, we would write 32 square inches. We write inch squared instead of inch because we're saying that the area consists of 32 inch squares. It would be incorrect to say that the area is 32 inches, because this would be a, qual a quantity of length, not area. If a rectangle has a width w units and a height h units, then its area is w times h units squared. Note that this formula makes sense even when w or h are not integers, whole numbers. For example, consider this rectangle. There are four units across, with two and a half squares tall. From the picture, the total number of units is 10, because four half rectangles together add up to two units squares. Thus, if we multiply four by two and a half, we get 10 unit squares. The point is that sometimes when we compute area, we don't get an integer answer, but that's okay. If we get an answer of 8.3333 as an area, that means the total number of units square was 8 together with a third of a unit square. The area of a square whose side is a units is a squared. Clearly, a square is a special type of rectangle whose width is a and height is a as well. Triangles and parallelograms. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of parallel sides. Let's look at this picture. Note that the height of a parallelogram is not the length of the slanted side. It's the length of the dashed line from one side to the opposite side, also called the perpendicular. Two lines are said to be perpendicular when they intersect at a right angle. Thus, the way we find the height of a parallelogram is by drawing a perpendicular line from the top to the bottom side. The length of this perpendicular line is what we call the height. To find the area of a parallelogram, we can cleverly cut away the triangular part and reconfigure it on the other side. This completes the picture of a rectangle, for which we now know how to compute the area. Thus, we see that the area of a parallelogram is the width times the height, or w times h. To find the area of a triangle, the concept is similar as we did with parallelograms. If we pick one of the three angles of a triangle, called vertices in plural or vertex in singular, from that point we draw a perpendicular line to the opposite side of a triangle. In the left triangle, the side is already a perpendicular from the top vertex to the point of its opposite side. So the side itself is the perpendicular. In the middle triangle, the dotted line is the perpendicular from the top vertex to a point on the other side. The triangle on the right has an obtuse angle. Notice how the perpendicular from the top vertex never actually reaches the opposite side, as the opposite side segment does not extend far enough out to reach the perpendicular line. Nonetheless, we still consider that line to be a perpendicular since if the lines were extended, they would intersect at right angles. The length of the perpendicular line we call the height, and the opposite side, which is perpendicular to the height, is what we call the base. We have created a second identical copy of the triangle in this diagram and placed it on top of itself. These two triangles together produce a parallelogram whose width, or base, 
is b, and whose height is h. The area of a parallelogram is the base times the height. Therefore, the area of the triangle will be one half of that, namely one half of the base times the height, which is the general formula for the area of a triangle. Trapezoids. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with a pair of parallel sides. Note a parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides, but a trapezoid has only one pair. Note just as with parallelograms and triangles, the height of a trapezoid is the length of the common perpendicular to its pair of parallel sides. We would like to come up with a way of computing the area of a trapezoid. Let b1 and b2 be the length of the two bases. Those are the lengths of the two parallel sides, while h is the height of the trapezoid. To find the area, we can draw a diagonal and break up the trapezoid into two triangles. Note that the diagonal creates two triangles with bases b1 and b2, and each of them have a height of h. The area of the top triangle is one half of the first base times the height, and the area of the bottom triangle is one half of the second base times the height. Thus the average of them, and thus the area of the entire trapezoid, would be one half of the first base times the height, plus one half of the second base times the height. Put into a more succinct formula, it would be one half of the first base plus the second base times the height. The Pythagorean Theorem. Consider a right triangle with the two shorter sides of A and B and a longer side of C. The Pythagorean Theorem says that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. For example, if the two smaller sides of a right triangle are 5 and 12, then the longest side, or C, will satisfy the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so 5 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. The left-hand side adds up to 169, so 169 equals c squared, from which it follows that c equals 13. Thus, the longest side is 13. Let's look at another example. If c is 4 and b is 2, then from the equation a squared plus 2 squared equals 4 squared, we can conclude that a squared plus 4 equals 16, and so a squared equals 12. Therefore, a equals the square root of 12, which is about 3.46. The implication of this theorem is that if we construct squares on each side of the triangle, the two smaller squares will add up to the larger square in area. Circles and sectors. A circle is a collection of all points equidistant from a fixed point called the center. The distance from the center to the outside of the circle is called the radius. The line segment through the center of a circle is called the diameter. The circumference is the total length around the circle. A fundamental property of circles is that the circumference divided by the diameter is the same quantity for every circle, no matter how big or small the circle and its circumference is. The circumference divided by the diameter is always the same, and that is a constant number called pi, which is approximately 3.14. So a circle has a radius, which is one half of its diameter, and the area of a circle is pi r squared, or pi times the radius squared. Suppose instead that we wish to find the area of a sector, which is part of a circle. This is a pizza-like region, or pizza slice-like region of a circle, as determined by an angle, which we can call by its Greek letter theta. Since a full revolution has 360 degrees, this means that theta divided by 360 is the fraction of the circle that is analogous to the sector. So the area of a sector would be given by theta, the angle carving out the sector, divided by 360 times pi r squared.